Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again, folks, to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, and guess what? You know, hey, I still have my ballot here. I still have my ballot. I've not voted yet. I mean, all sorts of things are happening between now and the 4th. A few days from now, that's next next week, week after next, week after next from now. That's the fourth, it's going to be on a Tuesday, but I will probably hold my ballot until that day to vote. Because all sorts of things are coming out. I mean, I've been looking at all sorts of programs of late, and as far as, the, uh, as, far as Oregon is concerned, and that's where my focus will be, the Oregon aspect of it. But um, anyway, it's interesting. I don't know if you've voted yet. Uh, some of you, I'm sure you, you, maybe you haven't, and maybe you're a little disappointed in terms of what the ballot looks like. And uh, so what we're going to do is that uh, I'm going to sort of entertain you and, and see whether or not we might get a vote out of you. Because I think it's very important that you vote one way or the other. But you should ex exercise that right. It's very, very important. Okay? Well, my guest, uh, you've, seen, you've seen John Sweeney with me before. Here's John here sitting on my, on my left on the screen. And what we're going to do, we're going to discuss the, the ballot. We're just going to go right through the deal. He's, he's already made his... His, uh, his, given his vote, he's already voted for that matter. He and his wife's already voted. Was my we have voted, yes. Yeah, he voted. With, with you you influenced her to vote you. A little bit. A little bit. What does that mean? All of the election? She's stubborn. Oh, 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 gee, oh boy, I tell you, that's, I know she's looking too, by the way. She's going to be very interesting. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, folks, we're going to go on and open up the line. We're going to open up the line. Just go on and open up the line. We're going to open up the line. And you're just going to, we're just going to go right down the, right down the line and and uh, this is what the ballot looks like. And hopefully you've taken it out of this envelope. And, uh, you know, hopefully you'll take, you've taken it out of the envelope. And, and there it is. Okay? So here's the ballot. I've got it right here in my hand. And then I've got a couple of newspapers here that, uh, uh, that you know, that from a metro area aspect of it, we all were pretty, we pretty well noticed that, that they tend to take the lead in terms of uh, who you should vote for. I think, uh, uh, excuse the French, the baby boomers tend to, Identify with the Oregonian, the little old, yeah, the, the, the little old, and then the uh, and then the uh, the Willamette Week tend to identify with the uh, the other side, okay? Yeah. And uh, very interesting, some very interesting, uh, yeah. And then I, I noticed of late that there was there was a lot of mixture, if you will. I, I noticed on Lars show, Lars, uh, Lars interviewed, if you will, the the, the um, uh, I guess the editor or somebody from uh, from the Willamette Week. Mm -hmm. he, he interviewed him, and I thought it was interesting. That interview was very interesting, by the way. And then, uh, and then the Oregonian, uh, Steve Bain, uh, the Sunday Show. Mm -hmm. I think he he's in, he interviewed. He basically had the debate. They had the debate on marijuana. Mm -hmm. The marijuana. Uh, that's uh, they did that piece on the on the eighty eight. Uh, uh, that was ninety one. That was on ninety one. Okay. But uh, yeah, what, what do you need? Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Good. Sounds good. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, folks. But anyway, the lines are going to be open. The Tom's already jumped on the line as it is, as you, as you can see. But we're going to go right down the line, okay? Let's get down. Let's get right down to Congress here. Let's see. The congressional races. Are, okay, uh, we got the congressional races right here. Uh, we got, okay, so U.S. Senator, vote for one. Mike Mochelin, M-O-N-T-C-H-A-L-I-N. He's a libertarian, libertarian party. You got Jeff Merkley, Democrat, Independent, Working Families. Now you notice there's, there's a couple other areas there that uh, have, have supported Jeff. Uh, well, he's the incumbent too, also the Independent and the Working Families. These are group. These are third party. Uh, these are third. Correct. They're third party groups, and I guess he went to that convention and whatever, and and they've uh, they opted to support him. Then you've got Christina Jean Lugo. She's with the Pacific Green Party. Okay. And then you got Jim Lewinberger. In fact, we were going to try to have Jim today, but unfortunately, he may, he may have had some issues with the family or whatever. We had some other commitments that he had to make. But anyway, you've seen Jim over here before. But anyway, he's with the Constitution Party. Okay, then you've got Monica, Monica Weeby. She's a Republican. She's a Republican on the deal. And most have said that, well, the race is between the, her and, uh, and Jeff Merkley. Okay? What do you think about that? Well, they're, uh, they're the ones that are getting most of the press, but the interesting thing is that the Oregonian says that they can't support either one. Yeah, and yeah. Usually they go one way or the other, usually mm -hmm. the, on the liberal side, but it's uh, quite amazing that they 
see no reason to support either yeah, one of very them. Interesting, so. Very interesting. And then on the, other, <clears throat> the Willamette Week, on the other hand, supported Jeff Merkley. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, they slide so far to the left, it's just uh, they just hope it's not a, is, a, is a that short what it is? pier, you know. Is, is that what it is? Oh, yeah. Lots of, lots of grease, and they just to the left. See, is that, is that what they did when they when they interviewed you? Oh, yeah. Uh, they, they don't like me because the deal is I tell them uh, how it is, and and they really don't want to hear about the truth. They oh. just like the, the the left slime is what they okay. like. Oh wow, well oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, get this one doing. Okay, so uh, uh, do do we get the do we get the nod? Yeah, I mean you know remember now this time around we got the D and the R here. You know, yeah. uh, people have no respect for either one of us, right? Probably. Yeah. I mean, from a congressional standpoint, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They well, don't like the yeah, D's. They don't like voted. the R's. But you already voted. Yeah, I voted for Webby. You know, Webby. Yeah. But you're a D. Tough. You're a Democrat. Tom's a, a Republican. A de he's, he's a Republican. I mean, Dave's a Dave's a. I didn't say Dave's a Democrat. We got two Daves in there. Right? So so we're gonna share it up. He, one's an R and one's a D. There you go. <laughs> and then you got Jim. Jim. Jim's hitting the mic, and so I, I think he's gonna be an R. He's gonna be an R. So we got them all, folks. And so I, let's see. I got. Oh, let's see. I'm, I'm seeing the hands. Who do you vote for, Dave? Oh, I got an R. I got one. And okay, what about the other one? Oh, he's oh, he's got a D. So. <laughs> The Constitution, too? Okay, fine. All right. Sounds great, guys. Okay. Well, one, one of the things I do, you know, if somebody's squawking a lot, well, did you vote? No? Well, then shut up, because you didn't talk when it counted the most. Oh, wait a minute. And, and that talking is when you vote. No, 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 no. But wait a minute. The vote is not until the 4th, now, John. Come on now. Well, I've done that in the past, and I'll do that in the future. You <laughs> okay. Get these people up there, they're pounding on the table, making all kinds of noises. Just, well, did you vote? No? Well, hey, you didn't talk when it counted. I got you. Because got you. the deal is your vote. Is something they can't uh, I, I hear you. repute. So hey, look, hey, like I said, the, the mic is live now. I mean, call in, give us a call in. Let us know what you think about this particular race. U.S. Senate, the, the Senate race. You got, you got. Uh, I, I named those folks. Who would you vote for? Who would you vote for? <clears throat> Do you have enough courage to give us a call? Huh? Give us a call. Give us a call. And yeah, there's the number right there. Call us on. Now, again, this is the U.S. Senate. Right? After we leave that particular issue, we're going to go to the go, go, we're going to another race. So, so we we may come back if given the given the time. But the bottom line, give us a call and tell us why you voted for whomever you voted for, whether it be the Pacific Green Party, or, and whether it be the Libertarian, or the Constitution Party, or either Jeff Merkley, who's the incumbent, or Monica Weeby. I mean, you know, Doc is pretty good. I mean, I, what do you think about Doc? Yep, she's pretty good. Oh, yeah. You're smiling uh, like you voted for it, right? You voted for it. <laughs> I said I voted for it. Oh, you, oh hey. You're really trying I, to pull it I, out, you know? I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hear you. I didn't, I didn't hear a lot of But now, now that I know, you know. I tell you what, I'm going to get a great big horn there and stuff it in your ear. And oh. Go, hey, Bruce, you there? Oh, okay, cool. All right, that, that's a good idea. You, you got a horn out there? I mean, here's John. He's going to pull it in there. But he, okay. Now, let's go to U.S. Representative, 3rd District, vote for one. You got Earl De Pearl. I mean, oh, I'm sorry, Earl Blumenauer. Earl Blumenauer. Earl, Earl, yeah. Earl Blumenauer. Okay, Democrat. We were. You ran against him before, haven't you? Yep. I have too. Yep. Yeah. Has he ever identified with the metro area when, in it, within in his district when he ran for you? Ran for he, he is. He is uh, really gone. You know, and the deal is that he is really upset the fact that Ashley has to stand for election. He just figures, hey, it's his his space, and 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 he really objects. You know. Really seems upset that he actually has to stand for elections. Mm. I wonder why didn't uh, President Obama didn't put him in his cabinet or something? I mean, I think he and early on. Remember when he was running for when, when the president was running and he was really supporting the president, President Obama. But uh, he thought sure he was going to get a cabinet position. They were talking about transportation, all yeah. that. What happened, John? Well, maybe they didn't like him. And the deal is, if uh, President Obama would have given Earl a spot, why that would have done us a favor because we could have got somebody else in. And one thing about uh, the congressional races is that most counties in Oregon only have uh, one district. Right. Some have two. Multnomah County, geographically one of the smallest counties in the, in the state, has three because the deal is it's the first, the third, and the fifth. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, it's amazing that they haven't got around straighten that out. I made all of Multnomah County the third congressional yeah. district. Well, let's, let's get this call. Call you on the air. Your question or comment, please. What what about U.S. Senate or the representative we get, we get ran into? Who are you, who are you, who are you favoring? I tuned in a little bit late, and uh, I, that's not what I call about. Is uh, I'm calling about what I see really stinks in the news media. Really? About three months ago when the uh, 
Senate campaign first started out, uh, there were some uh, news facts that were exposed about Monica Webby. Okay. Um, and uh, the fact was that she uh, had a lady bring her approximately 10-year-old son to her and right. said, my son is exhibiting symptoms A, B, and C. Okay. Monica Webby examined, examined this child okay. and operated on this child not once but not twice. And when all was said and done, and you can go check this out yourself, because okay. I saw it on all right. AATU Channel 2, I saw it on COIN Channel 6. What happened? I saw it on, Coin, or on uh, KGW Channel 8. Come on. Uh, that... Um, there was two unnecessary operations performed on this child. It turns out the mother was sick, sick in the head, because she has Munchausen syndrome by proxy. When wow. That's what's called, that's the term that they use for parents that are... So call her. That, uh, not not that I'm trying to intervene, children. but call her. Tell me something. Who did you vote for? I mean, and let's get down to the, to the meat here. I haven't, I haven't voted yet. Yeah, We're trying you? to skirt the issue here, Mr. Repigli Khan. Okay. Uh, the point is, is that oh. the... Uh, well, we're going to see you uh, later. Monica I mean, I, I, I thought maybe... You... Okay. Uh, now, let's go. Let's go to the next caller here, Jim. Sorry about that. Well, yeah, I mean, we we don't we don't want a monogram. I mean, we we got we got yeah. You got you got you know, names. You don't have to call names on people. I mean, right right up front, everybody's got a ballot, okay. And hey, we, this is your opinion, but but let's let's be a little bit more sensible. Okay, we got another call on the air. Call on you on the air. Your question or comment, please. Hi. Hi there, uh, Bruce. Um, I voted for Monica Webby, and not particularly because I think that she's going to be doing that much better of a job, but because what's been happening so far has been so bad, okay. I don't see it really getting too much worse. And the other thing is, I, again, I think people have to start understanding that we really don't have two parties in this state. Okay. And if you have Good point. The, the, the 90 pass, we won't have anything in this state that resembles a party. But as for, the reason I voted for Monica Webby was that you need change. When okay. things get entrenched for far too long, then things can't get changed. And okay. if you mix it up, at least by putting somebody new in the position, you have a possibility of not having everything just steamroll okay. ahead like it has before. Okay. So the main reason is okay. changing it up. Sounds great. Thanks, Renee. Good deal, boy. She, and she, you know, Renee. Renee knows some folks too, by the way. She's she again. She's she selected Monica. Okay. Hey, another caller. Call me on the air. Your question or comment, please. Oh well, gee whiz. Call back. Call back. Sorry about that. But we want to make sure we got Renee's uh, point there across. I thought there were some good points that were made there. Okay. U.S. Senate race. You can still call. Okay. We got him again. We got the person. The person still trying to call here. Uh, put put the caller on. Call me on the air. Question or comment, please. Are you there? I would like to finish up where that other person left off. Well, well, in all due respect, let's give some, we got some, we got a whole bunch of folks here waiting in line, but I tell you what, we'll catch you a little later on, okay? Sounds great. Okay, now we're getting back to the U.S., the representative, the third, the third congressional district there. We got Michael May, Mayo, I guess that's Mayo? Mayo. Mayo, M-E-O, Pacific Green Party, represent the Green, Pacific Green Party, James Buchel, no James, he's been on the show here before. Uh, he, he was also supported, he's a Republican, but he was supported also by the Independent uh, group and in the Constitution Party, okay. James Buchel, okay. You got Earl Boom and I. We just talked a little bit about Earl. Earl's been there forever. We got Jeffrey Langan, L A N G A N. You know, in fact, I got to go back to Earl because he looked like a squire. You know, you know his ad. You know, he was just standing near the table, boy. He he looked like a millions. You know what I mean? Boy, he had a lot of money there. I mean, what's what's the deal with that? <laughs> Well, he's spending a lot of money this time. Um, spending a lot of money? Why? Yeah, I mean, the well, guy's gonna, he's gonna, it's a natural win. It's, well, What's it's the a deal? Show, uh, well, it's a, the figure's a show, show win, but uh, they, the federal candidates or the federal uh, representatives and senators, they can't take their war chest with them anymore. So, anymore? What do you mean? Anymore? What do you mean? Okay, it's, well, the deal is... Beforehand? They, someone was, why well, do you take his money They figure run? he's getting ready to retire, so he's just kind of burning up the money. But there was a time, and I forget when they changed the law, the the, can, the federal uh, senators and uh, representatives, they when them. they retired, they could take their war chest wow. with them. Hold that point there, Luke. Let's take this caller right here. Caller, caller, you on the air. Question or comment, please. What do you think? Go on, caller. You got the caller there? Uh, yeah. What's going on there? Fine. I'm waiting. We're waiting for you. Who, who, who selected him for the U.S. Senate race there? Well, um, I'm not going to vote for Monica Webby because she operated twice on a child that didn't need it, and she. You, you, you're back. <laughs> oh, is another guy. Okay, I'm sorry about that. 
You got you got you got to go with Monica, right? He's off. Where did he go? Is that okay? Good. I'm sorry about that, guy. Well, like I said, we got some folks that are waiting here. Now, hey, let's get back to this business about spinning your your war chest aspect of it. Well, they, it used to be that that the uh, U.S. senators and U.S. representatives could, when they retired, they could take their war chest with them, tax free. Tax free? Uh, aren't they right. getting? Haven't they gotten enough? Well, what, what's that, what's that all that, about? The deal is see what the happened to that, John? Well, they when they passed the law, there was a whole bunch of them that retired and took their war chest. In fact, some of them, so the senators had time left. They they retired and took their money with them. See, and now well, they, what, they're what, getting they're what, getting what's, okay. what's, 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 what's two or three hundred dollars or a thousand bucks? I mean, what's, no, we're what's talking. The, some of those people were taking millions, millions tax free. One million. Ten million on one of them. Ten million. Tax free. And tax free. Yeah. And now do you remember when Jeez. Bob Packwood got elected? See, now they make about one hundred seventy four thousand dollars right. a year plus what they could could lift. See? Right. And anyway, when Bob Packwood got elected <laughs> and it, it was sixty thousand dollars. And anyway, they had pennies for Packwood program. And I remember one of the guy uh, commentators on Channel six and he was talking about it. He says, you know, I'd like to go back there and try to live on sixty thousand dollars a year, which was a lot back yeah, then. Very much and so. it was, but on, but they had this pennies for Packwood thing. It, it went there, and anyway, this commentator got on there and he says sixty thousand a year. I'd like to try that. You know, they uh, they go back there. You know, when they were back there, they say, oh, I got to maintain two houses. They get three thousand a month as a rent subsidy. You could rent a halfway decent place for three thousand a month. I live with another representative or something like they do quite a bit, you know? Yeah, Sh like share a lot the rent. of them. Share they, the rent. A lot of them would uh, would share their rent, and they were okay. saying how horrible it is, and and actually had some uh, representatives that went back there and actually slept, and right. lived in their right. offices. Right, right. That's right. That's right. Well, someone's hinted. I, I'm going back to Earl just for a moment. You know, you know, I, I couldn't understand why was this this big push, if you will, of him supporting the the marijuana situation. You got my point? But someone has said, I mean, it's alleged. Now, understand, I said alleged. I made, I made that point. I mean, it's alleged. He's thinking about opening up a store. <laughs> well, why not? I mean, you know, hey, everybody, hey, so, hey, folks, hey, hey, you better check it out. You might want to open up a open up a shop. You know, you make you some money. And, in fact, in fact all those guys, I, I, I heard, uh, in fact, I heard this morning on, on the Steve Dean's show, I guess, uh, talking about, he, well, he had the debate about the marijuana piece, and somebody had asked him the question, about uh, what about all of those folks who got busted uh, just for smoking a little marijuana and they're, they're in this institution and they say, oh, you're going to let these guys out of here. And so the guy said, no way. They're going to stay in the pen. Well, guess what? They can come up with a, an OJT program, on the job training program in the institution, prepare them to open up shops when they get out. They're probably the most qualified people to be uh, to get jobs in, in, those, in, those, in those, 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 uh, those shops. Wouldn't you think, John? Well, probably, but probably if this passes... The legislature may get in there, or the governor saying, "Look, they've changed the law, and we need room in the prison." So go. the fact that they, they may would, let them go, they would, may let them go. But what about jobs? I mean, there's gonna be a lot of jobs there. Why? Why can't we qualify those folks while they're there? Because right now they, they can't get jobs when they get out anyway. Well, it's a it's a difficulty because uh, a lot of people don't want to hire ex-cons, no matter. No, uh, well, what they're not ex-cons now. I'm talking about. Hey, they've got the background. We're going to go on and approve the marijuana law aspect of it. And, you know, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of jobs. I mean, all kinds of jobs. So why don't we go on and, and, and train these folks right there while they're in the institution? Well, so, and, and that's right, but they, they can become. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah but my well, point, but my well, point, they got the background. Okay, if they let them, let them out and then they pardon them, wipe it out so they have no record, that's different than if they just let them out. No, that's a resume, John. They know what they're doing. <laughs> It just makes more sense to go, to go with someone that knows what they're doing. You wouldn't be you wouldn't buy a joint from someone who would know what they're doing, would you? I wouldn't buy a joint. Period. You know, <laughs> the deal is, I'm a lifelong non-smoker, and uh, oh, oh, drugs is oh, drugs is not oh, my thing. You know, oh, oh, when it comes to little spirits. You know, alcohol is just fine. Oh, okay, all right, all right. We'll go along with that one. Scotch on the rocks. I mean, this is this is these are these are fun time, folks. I mean, these, these are really fun times right now. So we we're we're having quite a time here. Anyway, um, we went, went through the U.S. Representative Third District, and we, really, there's got to be someone out there that wants to vote for Earl. Give us a call, please. Give us a call. This guy's been in there for years. You're trying to ruin my day, aren't you? Uh, gee, John, 
Well, you ran against him. I ran against him, too. Oh, I mean, yeah. But we couldn't get him to, to debate or anything. I mean, maybe we can get him now. I mean, he, Well, you know, go down there with uh, the Willamette Week. I don't want to spend too had, much had time. a few words in yeah. there, and they, they let the roll of Pearl run on, you know, just like he never shut up, you know? Well, he almost left when I, when I was there with the Willamette Week. He almost walked out. He walked out with me. And the only question they, they, they asked, and he, I think he knew the answer, was, what was the price of milk? And I think he, I think he got that one. But anyway, well, was, okay. Uh, well, w look like we don't have any support there. I'm, I'm looking for someone that will say, hey, I'm going to be voting for, voting for Earl Blumenauer for Congress, right? He's the incumbent. Please give us a call. In fact, we'll we'll hold that one. Aside. We'll put that one aside a bit. Okay? We'll come back to that one. Earl, Pearl. Okay. Now, what about the governor's race? Now, boy, now that's a good one, there, boy. That's a good one. Now, mm -hmm. now, who'd you vote for? I vote for uh, Richardson. But you're a Democrat. Well, he's a military guy like you are, see? And the deal is that uh, okay. uh, it's beyond uh, Dr. K's time. Dr. Dr. K's. But, boy, I tell you, I mean, some of the things that, that have come out, that have been, has come out as a, as a, lately with the, with the journalistic community aspect of it, but the bottom line, he's still leading. I'm, talk, I'm talking about John Kitsap is still leading. Well, it's getting pretty flaky recently. What's the deal, John? Well, the deal is people are waking up, and the thing is that... Uh, no, but waking up from something, he's still leading. I mean, are they yeah, waking you up? You haven't voted. You, you're going to vote oh, no, for no, Dr. No. K? You're going to vote for Dr. K? I, mine's a mystery. I mean, I, I'm voting for Dennis right now, but it's a mystery. You know, I want I want more stuff to come out. You keep this out, they're no, going to have to paint the floor brown. They, will, they, will, they already have. <laughs> they have. But let's, let's talk about the other folks who are running also, too. The Progressive Party. Chris Henry's running also, too. Chris Henry. Anybody want to, hey, give us a call about Chris. How about Aaron R., A-U-E-R, I hope I spelled, spelled, his, spelled his name right. Constitutional Party, he's representing the Constitutional Party. And then John, uh, our present incumbent governor, uh, has Demo he's a Democrat. He's got the, also the working families, working families. They're all supporting him. They're supporting him also, too, okay? Then you got Paul Grad, who's a libertarian, and Jason Levine, Pacific Green Party, Okay. Oh, and then there's another one, John Sweeney. Oh, okay, that was a right in. That, that, that was a that was a right in on you, John. You had a right in on that one. That's good. That's a hell of a, heck of a deal, boy. It's a good deal. Anybody? Hey, anybody want to talk about this piece about the uh, the governor's race? What do you think? There's been a lot of talk about the governor's race. What do you think about the governor's race? What do you think? In some cases, uh, the, the Oregonian, the Oregonian, for instance, they endorsed uh, uh, Governor Kitzhopper. He, he was Governor Kitzhopper. Let's well, take this call while you're thinking about it. Okay, okay call you on the air. Your question or comment, please. Oh, we got somebody hung up there. Looked like there was another right in there for that. that thing. The governor's race. We're talking about the governor's race. What do you think? There's been so much talk about the governor's race. The governor's race. And you've been reading, if you, if you haven't read it, if you haven't heard about it on radio, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't seen it on TV, I mean, it's, it's quite a... It's quite a fruckers right now. It's, it's something else. It's really crazy. It's really crazy. Really crazy. So give us a call. What do you think about the governor's race? Now, Dennis, you know, like I said, Dennis, I mean, he's quite, quite a guy. You know I mean? Uh, the fact of the matter is, the guy is he's, he's a former Vietnam, like myself, and like, you know, veteran of foreign war and aspect of it. Well, the thing is, Legislator. That I've. Um, what do you think about it? You that? see, there's a lot of you know, static going on about both cases, but. <clears throat> I've watched uh, the legislative sessions, and uh, actually, when uh, Representative uh, Richardson got up and talked on different issues, right. and uh, followed had a uh, very thoughtful and organized uh, train of thought mm -hmm. that he presented to the uh, members of the uh, House of Representatives uh, to get information across to them to influence their uh, opinions and votes on mm -hmm. one or the other for different issues. So mm -hmm. the fact that he is a uh, uh, very smart and thoughtful man. Sure, sure he is. Yeah, yeah. You know, the thing, the other thing I was, I was interesting about how the justification, if you will, for the Oregonians uh, supporting uh, uh, Governor Kitzhopper as opposed to uh, Representative Dennis Richardson for governor, I thought that was interesting. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Look like we've got a caller. Call you on the air. Your question or comment, please. What do you think? Who yes. you want? Well, this is Roger Widener. I, was a, I ran for governor in 1998. I was the Reform Party candidate for oh, governor. Right. And it's and it's critical that we uh, have a new day down there at the 
governor's office. I've been keeping Kitzhoffer apprised of all of this. That I've been going after the corruption that's going on in the court system as a former prosecutor. Right. I ran the Consumer Fraud Department in 1990, and I'm not getting any response at all from him, from Richardson. I mean, he's listening intent, uh, very critically. Uh, yes. I met him through uh, Jesse Lott, and so I'm just very impressed with Richardson's uh, attitude on what right. he's facing Oregonians today, and that is that we do not have constitutional government. Right. And that's what we have to restore to the right. citizens, yes. where, their, where their rights are respected. Okay, we'll keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you very you much. Great. Thank you very much for your comment. You betcha. Hey, uh, do we have any comments from the, on the other side there? I mean, let's, let's, let's talk about this stuff. You know, it's interesting he makes this, this point about, about, about Dennis. And when I noticed the, the thing that the Oregonian was kind of like saying, well, hey, look here, the, the guy's trying to send Mexicans uh, uh, to China, I guess, right? To China, mm -hmm. that, that piece there in the jail. You know? And then the, the other issue was uh, in regards to, uh, who was it, uh, the abortion? What was the other deal with the other? Oh, that was about when a woman got got pregnant, the fact that she no longer had right. control, right. see, and right. it's uh, kind of an unfortunate thing. And uh, and then there was another issue. What was the other real quick, right? Uh, that was about the uh, sending the uh, illegal alien prisoners to China. Right, saw that. right, right. And there was one more. There was one other. There was three uh, of them. I don't remember. But, but anyway, one. but you know, I guess the thing that I, uh, that I thought was interesting, I looked at the dates when he supposedly made those statements. I mean, during that particular time, we were all in the same boat. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. A long time ago. I mean, you know, in all due respect, I mean, we've had to live with this situation. Many Oregonians were very upset, if you will, with the issues during that particular period of time. Those were old dates. I mean, they should have made they should have made that large print, if you will. I mean, uh, this, this gentleman, he's up to date. He's very progressive, and and you know, we, we do need change. We do need change. I think about Columbia River crossing. No, there was no mention about CRC. No, 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 no mention about the CRC. I can Columbia give you a long Prince. list about you know the CRC. And and you know that's that's basically was 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 associated with um, Governor John Kitzhopper. You know, oh, and, yeah. and all the cronies that were sitting up there who spent that two hundred million bucks in consulting fees and would be still spending it today, would be still spending it today. Yeah. And we do need a bridge. We need a bridge. Yeah. But unfortunately, you know. But anyway, and a lot of other goodies. Okay, I said we're talking about the governor's race. Okay, anybody want to call in on the governor's race? Anybody want to dispute the, the, the points that were uh, that, uh, that that they laid out in regards to Dennis? Oh, those are those are old old things, you know. And it just bu bugs you that you okay. We get how these questions were. Oh, oh, this is great. Oregon Family Council. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Now, okay. Oregon Family Council. That's a, that's a good one too. Also too. Let's see what their endorsements were. You got, got, got endorse, this endorsement that piece. Okay. 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 We got some we got some good points that were made here. And uh, I think I think it's a good deal here. Okay, look like they've uh, look like they've endorsed uh, uh, Representative Dennis Richardson for governor here, and he went all along the line and we did the yes on all these items, uh, and uh, unfortunately on uh, Governor Kitzhopper, uh, there were several no's aspect of it, but the Oregon Family Council voted for him. Okay, he was. Well, they got some goodies there right there. Okay, good. Yeah, they got the question. Yeah, they got the question and the answer. Right, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I'm still waiting on. I'm still waiting on this call here. John, speak, talk a little bit about about kids out there for a moment while we well, while we're looking at the concert. Well, one of the things that you talk about the the CRC is the fact that they spent uh, a lot of money and then they had the environmentalists step in and says they didn't want to have a, a bigger bridge with more capacity and not going. If you're going to build another bridge, you want to go for more capacity. And also, you've had um, Sharon Asset on, and she had other other proposals for for oh, other yeah, bridges. Yeah, alternate, right, and, right, and, right. And you're, you have more uh, traffic and stuff like that. And, and if you have a uh, a new new bridge, the fact that without a lift, because of, then the people would just be able to cross the bridge without stopping, because you have those cars stop and wait with their engines idling, and that talks about you're using up fuel and your your uh, uh, processing the air through the engines, and so you're uh, using up the oxygen, and you're producing more carbon dioxide and some sulfur dioxide and some other processes. So the thing is, it's what you need to do is to do it right, is to have another bridge, and that was to uh, uh, make it so that there there is no lift, uh -huh. so you don't have to, so the people would process across, and they and 
the way they run the thing is that they'd have things set with somebody, then they would ask somebody else. And, you know, they instead of finding out who all the players are mm -hmm. and put all the cards on the table at one time, well, you could talk to somebody and everything's fine. You talk to somebody else and they've got, a, got another view because they wanted the bridge to be so high for river traffic, but they had to be so low for... Uh, for aircraft. Yeah, right. But yeah. you know, but you know, on that point about the river traffic aspect, which was this is the thing that really just blew my mind. Why is it that the Coast Guard had to wait so many years, ten years, what, ten years out, before they made the point about hey, how high a bridge should be be built? I mean, it just blows your mind. Because they, they were not asked. That, they, what? they did not ask them mean? early. But they're the waterways. They're, they're supposed to know. The CRC people didn't ask them. They waited one at a time to yeah, ask but, but them. My to point is that, but my point is that the, these, these so-called drawings and all that, that, these discussions were, were being held. I mean, they should have said, hey, look, uh, by the way, you're gonna, you can't build this. You, here are the dimensions right now. You can only build it so high. Or so, well, uh, but see, the, the point is they would talk to one group, get that settled, then another group, and another group. Well, you're talking to the people in, in Group A, you get one answer, well, when you talk to... Group B, the thing yeah. is, that changes some of the parameters. Yeah. They didn't ask all, all the people at one time to come in. They drug it out because their deal is they were dragging their jobs out. Well, you made the point. They were That's all consulted, right. so they just keep the money yeah. going. I went to a meeting <laughs> one time, the and they went going. over there. And, keep the flow. Keep and, that money yeah, flowing. About four out of five answers, these people are supposed to be the experts making big money. and says, I don't know. I don't know. And, if, and the, the fifth answer was... Well, ask Harry or ask Charlie. Yeah, right, right. But the deal is basically, you got real tired here, and I don't know. And I think there was, uh, uh, let's see, at that particular meeting, Marcraft, you remember him? I know. He yeah, Marcraft, yeah, yeah, Marcraft. He was uh, working for Earl, Earl the Pearl. Oh, yeah, time. yeah. He was working for Earl the Pearl. Yeah. He picked up a million bucks, you know that, don't you? Oh, yeah. As a consultant, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, he's, 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 yeah, he's working out. <laughs> well, anyway, let's go to this other deal right here. I got it. Now, let, let's, let's come up with some of the, I, I was interested, I got, I've got this piece from, uh, the Oregon Family Council Voters Guide, and they put this out every year. I mean, during the election time aspect of it, and, and they would basically ask questions, if you will. And um, I thought that was interesting. Now, on and here's here's one on supports. Here's it's a life piece. Here's, here's one that's pretty big all the time, most of the time. Supports restricting abortion except for rape, incest, or the life of the mother. Okay, the response by Governor John Kitzhopper was. John Kitzhopper is a clear and strong defender of a woman's right to choose. That's why the Planned Parenthood PAC has endorsed Kitzhopper for governor. Planned Parenthood, yeah. Planned Parenthood. okay. In fact, they're demonstrating today out on MLK today. Very interesting. Right to life is demonstrated, not Is that the right to life today? Right to, right, to life. Life, right to life, right to life. Is okay, good. Now, here's, here's uh, Representative Dennis Richardson's uh, response to that. And he got a yes, he got a yes on that. Oregon's late-term abortion laws are some of the most liberal in the country. Partial birth abortion for non-medical emergency reason should be outlawed. Okay. All right, that was his, that was his answer. Then I looked at the date and then all this stuff, the high, Oregonian related. That, that, was, that's not, that was not the statement. Fair? You got me? Here's another one. Gambling opposes off-reservation and private casinos. Now that's huge. That's huge in the metro area. You know, we got we we've got casino. We got uh, Casino Row there at, at Hayden Island. Boy, it's it's really a mess. We got all kinds of problems. And uh, Governor Kitzhopper says yes. Says yes on that. Says John Kitzhopper's position on the the issue has remained. Uh, no, opposes off-reservation. Okay, John Kitzhopper's position on uh, the issue has remained cons consistent over the years, and that is one casino per tribe on reservation land, okay? And uh, Representative Richardson says, I believe expanding the gambling in Oregon is harmful to families and would hurt the most of those who can who can afford it least. Now, that's that's a good answer. Yeah. It's a problem. It's a major problem. And then this is an answer. This, that, that's a good, good answer aspect of it. There's more, but again, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for someone to give us a call. I mean, I, I was, you know, what do you, what do you think? What, what do you think? What do you think about uh, uh, allowing the governor kids to operate? Was it, was it third term, or fourth term, fifth term? It'd be his fourth term. Yeah. Sixth term. He's on. He's Is on. Is that sixth term? No, no. He's. Oh, I'm. I'm he's I'm on different. his third term now, and he's wanting to go in for a fourth. Fourth term. Okay. Fourth term. Okay. Fine. Okay. What do you think about that? I mean, what do you think? Should, should somebody else be given a chance? Whatever. Give us a call. 
Give us a call, 503-288-4448. I mean, this is this is this is some serious stuff right now, okay? Now, well, we we spent enough time there on the government. We can come back if you got if you if you come up with an answer. Maybe pull out your ballot if you haven't if you haven't uh, read yet. But um, okay, look like we got a call. A call on the air. Your question or comment, please. What do you think? Uh oh, they hung up there. That's a no vote. That's a no vote. It's a no vote for Kids Hopper. Wow, gee, I, I didn't realize it. But we, we had that on the screen for a minute, on my private screen. Yeah, don't mutilate your ballot. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> no. All right, but you can go down to you can go down to Multnomah and get another one. Go for it. <laughs> I'm trying to. I, I'm, I want. I'm, I'm anxious. I got my pen in my hand. And I, I want to. I want. I want to do the check off deal. I got. I got a close deal here with Earl the Pearl, but I'm, yeah, yeah, but I. I want to do something for him. He's that, you know, you know, but I, you vote for him, I think you get three people and have you committed for is that what insanity. Is? Yeah. Oh wow! Okay, Let's, we better get back. We better go back down the race here. State represent forty fourth district. Okay, uh, we got. Uh, in fact, that's my representative, Tina Kotex. She's a representative from from uh, Jansen Beach or Hayden Island aspect of it. She's running against Michael Harrington, the Republican. So you got two people there: Michael Harrington and Tina Kotex. And, you know, as you know, Tina was very associated with uh, with the whole issue with the CRC and things of that nature. And folks got a little concerned about that piece. But Michael is trying to up and come. He's trying to do this thing. But I think it's a good race. Okay, we got another question. Oh, gee whiz. Boy, that, another vote. Another vote. Boy, another vote for somebody. Let's see, who did they vote for? John? Hard to say. Did they see, would they see you or me on screen? What, what's the deal? Well, they, do they have, need to see to you track. first? Well, you're on the screen there, so you must be the one so, scaring them. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. You got another time there? Okay, so what we're going to do then is we're going to take a short break, folks. I guess we're going to take a short break. And please, we want you to call in. We, we really would like your response. Renee may have to call back and just go down the line with us again, too. All right? We'll take a short break, and we'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Well, look, folks, we're back. We're back. We're back. Hey, look, we're talking about your ballot. I haven't, I haven't voted yet. I'm, I'm sitting here trying to figure out where I'm voting. Some folks are solid with me, but, uh, but bottom line, I haven't turned in my ballot yet. I haven't turned in my ballot yet. And, uh, but anyway, but what about you? Have you, you know, you still sort of going through the, the, the various uh, medias, and trying to figure, listen to a few programs, things of that nature, trying to figure, well, where are you going to vote? Whatever. But anyway, let's start off. This is our second half. It's our last half hour, if you will. We'll probably be on Sunday next week anyway, too. But I probably won't vote until that Tuesday. Okay? Understand we got a call on the line. Call you on the air. Your question or comment, please. What do you think? Um, I already voted. And, okay. um, I think Kit Topper is unreal. Oh. Uh, honestly, all the money he spent. Yes. Um, all these, um, what is it, uh, Drama, all the drama with his girlfriend and everything yes, is yes. just unreal. I, you know, I'm from California, plus the bridges. Right. Um, I can't believe all the bridges that they have here in, in Portland. It's like every every mile or two they have a bridge. I'm, I'm so blown <laughs> away. It would be nice just to have one bridge or not even just one, maybe a good three bridges and that's it. But they, it's like... Bridge after bridge after bridge. You're right, like, right. Oh, gee, what bridge should I? Right. 
Which one should I go over? Call it. Tell I me something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. Around. That's First okay. All, I wanna but but call it. Tell me about service. Dennis. Talk to me about you know, Dennis. You're a vet, call it. And I really appreciate that. Sure. Call it. Tell me something. Uh, t- a little bit about Dennis. What, what do you think about those negatives uh, that were being said by the Oregonian and the and the endorsement of Kitts Hopper and the, with the Oregonian and also the endorsement of, of Kitts Hopper with the Willamette Week? What do you think about that? Any thoughts? I think I think it's a shame that they're so left wing, you know, okay. I, I mm-hmm. really do. I think they should be uh, neutral. Okay, like, good. Uh, like every, like I, I wish that the media was, but it seems so left wing. Yeah, you know, so right. far left. It's wow. unreal. Wow. You know, um, well, not thanks. that I'm far right. Actually, I was a Democrat, and um, I changed because I. I that the country's going downhill. Wow. Fast. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's a, that's a vote. There's a vote for Dennis, and I can see it right off the bat. Well, thank you very much, Carla. Appreciate that. Uh-huh. Okay. You have a nice day. Hey, have a good gentlemen. one. Again, Bye. thank you very much. Okay. Look like we've got another call. Call you on the air. Where, where's your vote? Hi, uh, uh, Bruce. It's Renee here. Hi, Renee. I, I'm hoping you can we can talk a little bit about. Measure 92, which is the real sleeper on the campaign. We'll, do it. we'll jump. We'll, Renee, we'll jump right now on it. Going on with hey, 92. Let's do it right now. 92. Okay. Throw it out there right now. Right now. Let's 92 is a measure to uh, mandatorily label GMO products. And it sounds on the surface like a very good idea. And myself, I would, I would be very happy to have every GMO on the face of the planet labeled and out of my territory. However... Mandatory labeling, number one, at this time is kind of stupid because there's lots of people who are self-identifying and Whole Foods, nat- uh, New Seasons, and uh, natural grocers are all voluntarily going non-GMO in 2016. So there really isn't any n- need for this bill. However, if your agenda is quite different than just uh, labeling GMOs, the bill makes a lot of sense because if you look at the third paragraph in the bill, which no one ever reads the bill, okay. look at the third paragraph, it gives Codex Elementarius full authority, and it also says that the U.N. has the power to tell us whether we can label GMOs wow. or not. Wow, that's huge. Did yeah, that's they... really huge, and those are the sleepers in there that wow. people really need to understand that wow. 92 is not about labeling GMO. Interesting. Thanks, Renee. Appreciate that. You stick around. Stick that TV now. We may call you back for some other okay. goodies. Okay, thanks, bud. Appreciate uh-huh. that. Bye-bye. Okay, good. All right. Well, let's see. We we, 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 go. we went to 92 real quick. Anything you want to say about 92? We can do that, too. We can do that, too. Well, I thought we could go. What about... Uh, Again, uh, for the 44th District for State Representative, Michael Harrington and Tina Cote. Maybe Michael's out there. Michael, well, why do you think that uh, you should be running in, uh, against Tina Cote? What, what do you think? What do you think your, your chances are? And uh, if he's out there, if he's looking at the show, if he's not, call him someone. So he can give us a call and let, let, uh, let, him, let, let him give us your, his, his platform uh, the as to why, why Tina shouldn't be taking it. Because right now she's leading, as you know, they've endorsed her, the Oregonian and the Willamette Week. So, Michael, give us a call. Okay. Well, there it is. It's out there. Okay, let's go now. Well, there's judges' races and things of that nature, but that's not something. Let's get in these ballot measures now, okay? Let's get right up into these ballot measures. Okay. Bonds for college aid, yes. People are going to say yes on that piece. No. No? No? No. No. Okay. <coughs> Why not, John? Okay. Two Tom, things. Tom Echo. Was that an echo out there? By the <laughs> Tom? <laughs> Tom? I mean, what was that? Was that? The education industrial complex. Okay. Go on. And the thing is that, uh, and I run and I brought up the thing is, and to improve K through 12 education so right. people are ready to progress out of high school, either into uh, into work or blue collar or, 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 in, or right. into college. Okay. But the thing is, when they you they talk about improving. College, they mean, or improving education, they mean more. So the thing is that, oh, you got to go to community college, you got to go to uh, get a bachelor's degree and a master's right, degree right, and all right, that. Right, right. And a lot of people, you know, the way things are going and they're not improving, what, in 2050, you're going to have uh, PhDs that are illiterate? No voc ed, right? That we're using. Well, well we don't have voc eds now. Well, that's part of it. But the thing is, they want you to have more and more education. What right, are you, right. you going to be 26 year old Jeez, right. before you get a job? Jeez. Are you going to have to have a, a doctorate in uh, housekeeping to get a job as a janitor? Jeez. You know. And the other thing, when they got in into this uh, student loans, the members of Congress and the bankers all got in there. You cannot 
and except under extreme circumstances, go bankrupt on a, on a college loan. Mm. You are stuck for it, see? Well, but I noticed that the, I mean, well, a doctor well, saved well, your well, life. Well, Lambert Week said yes on that piece. Well, what's that, well what's that they're about? wrong. And the deal huh? is with, with the thing is that a doctor saves your life, and you can go bankrupt on, on his bill. But the deal is you can end up in a school that gives you a worthless degree. And you, yeah, that's right. And, you, I got you. and the thing is you can't use it, and you're still stuck for the bill. Okay, okay. let's get, the, let's get this. The, here's a the biggie. The driver's card, 88. Oh. 88. Now tell me, how did that get on the ballot? Because a lot of sick people around a deal is, and I voted no. We well, got the done, nursery folks. You got the nursery folks picking up berries and things like that. And this is for illegals. What don't you understand about illegal? What's the definition of illegal to you? Well, the thing is, if they want to come into this country, there is a process to right. do it. Right. See, right. and you know the the uh, the liberals want to get the votes, and the conservatives want to get the cheap labor. You know, if they want to have people coming in, they should do like in World War II. They had this Pescado project where they can get a, a permit so they can come in, mm -hmm. say, from the 1st of May to the end of October. Mm -hmm. That way they could travel around and have some legal protection because okay. a lot of the illegals who are here do not have any protection. Okay, but, that, but that's, that, 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 no, I got your point there. But the, here's the deal, as I see it, it's not the illegal. It's the people who employ them. We've got we've got the we've got the laws on the books, you know, but we're just not enforcing them. We got we got the farmers who are pushing this big time. We got the restaurant associations. We're pushing this big time, okay? Hey. That's who that's who's employing them. And I'm I'm gonna take away from the legal. It's us. We're the ones that are basically pushing this piece out there. What do you do about those folks? Should, should, should we send them to jail? We should we should have a bill that says, hey, if you're not if you're not enforcing the law, abiding by the law. You got to go to jail. Thing is, to enforce the law, and that means the employers. And the employers say, "Why well, aren't we doing it? Why aren't we doing it?" Well, they're saying the I nine is a, is a real problem. And I was uh, with the Portland Park. What's I nine? You're doing this I nine. What do you mean? It's a uh, immigration form you have to fill out. You get a new employee comes in, and they fill out the I nine, and there's no big deal to it. It's just a little bit of paperwork, and you fill out the I nine, and it's just part of the employment process. See. And, <coughs> And it's a matter of doing it legal, so the fact that these uh, people are uh, they're paid a decent rate because these people are paid, you know, they work under the table, so they don't get full pay, they don't pay yeah, taxes. Yeah, but, but who's, who's paying them? Are they paying themselves or are the, are the employers it's the, paying? the employers. So See, what are we going to do about the employers? you got to so enforce this is not, the laws. This is, this is the employer's bill. <laughs> this is the employer's bill. Enforce the law. Should not, they go to jail? You know? Should they pay. go to jail? What about that? Should they go to jail? Damn right. That 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 should be the that should be the bill, right? Oh yeah. So that's lock what, them up. All right, good. Let's go. That's, well, that's eighty-eight, folks. In all due respect, it's just a scam, if you will, by employers. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, let, what about the marijuana legalization? And actually, you got we, we, Oregonian and Willamette Week says yes on that piece. Yeah, I deal? voted for it. You know. I'll, all these potheads, let them buy it legal, and, and they can tax it, and they can smoke their brains away. Or, or the deal is that um, they can have marijuana cookies, and, you know, maybe they'll, uh, instead of take a sixth of a cookie, they'll take a whole cookie or what about the two kids? or three or four. What about the kids? And was it the, was it bear gums? And I, 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 maybe I'm getting it the wrong way. What was, what was, that, was it this bear gums or something? A little candy deal. Teddy bears. Teddy bears or something. They're going to they're gonna put it in teddy. You like that idea? No. Okay. Let's take a caller. Call you on the air, please. I mean, we're, we're having a little fun. I mean, it, this is a fun time election, unfortunately. Uh, yes, call you on the air. Your question or comment, please. Yes, sir. This is Francis from Happy Valley. Uh, enjoying the programming today. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you know, I want to give you guys a call. I just, been, I just kind of tuned in here a minute or two ago and looking at the uh, 88 measure. And uh, actually, interestingly enough, we were talking about that in our church this morning. Normally, the preacher or priest at the Catholic Church doesn't talk about political issues. Mm -hmm. When you look at the Latino and Hispanic community, which is a good portion of the Catholic Church, those right. folks, you know, uh -huh. are uh, good, hardworking, church-going people. Exactly. So we need to promote this yes on 88. It's gone first to the thought process of your uh, dialogue with your uh, gentleman there. Okay. The thought process being, we got you know people who are hardworking people go right. to church, have families, right. go to jobs, want to run their kids to school, want to run their kids to church, want to run their kids to their own jobs, working for employers that are paying them minimum low wages, honest, honest, hardworking people. 
that have families and just want to do the next right, right thing for taking care of themselves and their family, and they need to be able to get to and from work and not be penalized by the law enforcement because they don't have a license that's not the way where the, the documents aren't in order. The, the T's mm-hmm. aren't crossed, the I's aren't done, okay? Let's take care of these people. Let's take care of these families. Let okay. them have the opportunity to get their kids to school, go to work, and do the next right thing. I'll, I'll listen to your comments while I uh, get off the air. But, but, but before, you, before, you, before you leave, though, uh, what do you do about employers who are illegally doing this? I mean, that's, that's, that, that's the real, that, that to me is the issue. <laughs> You've got employers who are breaking the law and are not being fined. Yeah, there was, you know, in, in the past, there's been cases where the, the uh, legals would come over and they'd work for about two weeks. Just yeah, we had a system. Yeah, well, the deal is they, they, would, they would just break their butts, you know, doing all this agricultural work, which right. is really, right. really hard. And, and just before payday, they'd call INS, and the INS would come and gather them up and, and deport them. And so they, they work these poor people to death for two weeks, and then they don't, they don't pay them. But they're still doing that, John. Oh yeah, but I mean, the deal is this is the employers this, are getting sk- getting. Sk- I mean, they're skating away with this whole deal. I mean, that's that's really what the deal is. The problem oh, yeah. is the problem is the employers. Yeah. I mean, and, I, and I'm not making up any laws on the book. The the the, the laws are on the books. Okay, these folks. I I agree with the uh, the caller that uh, uh, you know, in fact, these are hardworking folks. You know, I mean, they're, they're coming across the border to a certain degree, but no, they, they wouldn't be coming across the border if if employers did abide by the law. Then they would just basically go through a legal because they did have transportation where basically they were being they were given cars to come and work on the work work during uh, the, the summer or whatever and to pick up the cops and things of that nature and was taken back to the border. Oh yeah, that was very legitimate. That was a very legitimate system during that particular time. But now today it's a whole different ball game. And boy, I tell you, many of the employees they, they, they were making comments, you know, from the standpoint of saying, "Well, gee whiz, uh, well, what's going to happen with my crop?" I mean, Americans don't want to do this kind of work. That's not true. That is not true. That's not true. Yeah. The deal is, <clears throat> I remember uh, down the local uh, place for adult beverages, a couple of guys were saying they wanted to get some money for a uh, concert. So they went out to Sobey's Island. Here's these big signs, help wanted. They showed up and they wanted to pick berries because they figured they could earn enough money for a concert and mm-hmm. they wouldn't hire them because they were not Latino. Mm, 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 mm. Well, you know, but like I said, we, 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 we've accepted that. And you ask yourself, who's the lobbying force behind this? Americans don't want to do this kind of work. I mean, have you ever heard that before when you were coming up? Was, that, was there a job? I hear that all the time. And the deal is that they have employers, they, they, they don't want to pay. And it's like they recently they had a turnout about what people were taking in college. And they, there weren't many people taking computer science. You go to these restaurants and bars, yeah. and there's people and they got degrees in computer science. And the businesses, they want to hire somebody from India. They don't right. want to pay 50000 for American. Right. They, they buy them for 30000 exactly. And these people have gone down there and says, I'll take that job for 30000 right. And they still won't hire them. Because they want somebody that they got a hammer for. Says you don't do it right, you're out the door. So the thing is that it's the employers again are uh, messing with the system. I got I got to think. We only have about three more minutes or what? You know, you've run before and I've run yeah. before. Why don't we put our heads together and go down to the legislature and put together a bill that that really reinforces the the whole issue of uh, of, of, of getting on these employers who are. Who are doing these illegal things and these poor people who are who are here in Mexico, uh, trying to work for their family, hardworking people that's willing to take those kind of jobs, and then they're working. Well, maybe if the complexion of the legislature changes, that we could do that. Well, it will be if you get elected. Well, not running this time, so. Well, you will be. That's what I'm saying. We can go down to the legislature and put something together. Call your respective uh, representative that's representing. Put together a bill, right, to, to solve this problem. Wouldn't yeah. you think? <laughs> the, the, the guy who's going to become my, who is my state representative, who got appointed, who will be probably reelected, is <clears throat> on the greasy slope left. So it's not going to greasy work. slope. What's the guy's name? Gee, give us, give us a name, John. Rob Nosh. Rob who? Nosh. Rob. I, oh, gee, the word Rob right up front. That that just clean. That explained the whole piece. Anyway, I won't, won't get caught up in no personal situations. But, but the fact of the matter is, it is an issue. And it's not helping us or the other country, the Mexican, the Mexican folks. No. These folks are, again, like the, like the cause, the hardworking aspect of it. But the people who are pushing this particular bill, 
mm-hmm. are the employers. Yeah. And the thing is, the fact that... They could care less about those folks. The fact that they're here illegally is the fact that they don't have protection, and a lot of the organizations that are say that they're for Latinos are able to victimize them even more. Wow, wow, wow. What, what if you were illegal, if you were illegal in Mexico, if you went to Mexico illegally, what would they do to you? I'd be in a can. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You, oh, fantastic. They, fantastic. They, you go to Mexico, and there's a lot of things you can't do. You can't do. That's right. That's right. Even if, even if you're there legally, the yeah. thing is, you... Uh, and if you're an employer from, from this country, half of your workforce, or is it all of the workforce, has to be if from the country. You can't do a lot of things in Mexico. The yeah, deal is, right. you, you can't uh, basically own property. You lease property when you're down there. Wow. Can, we own, can they own property in here? The, the Mexicans, illegals can come here and buy property. In fact, a lot of our property is being bought up by the Chinese. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we keep using the word illegal, you know what I mean? And it, 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 it kind of gives a bad notation from us if you use the word illegal, you know what I Because then the, the, those folks who are working, trying to get something going, then we become bad guys. See what I'm saying? So maybe we should forget the legal. And then let's talk about uh, what, what can we do to these employers, John? We need to call your, your, your was it Rob? Rob, Rob, what? No, sh- Rob, no. I thought, is he Robin Hood or something? Or is that Robin Hood or something? He's. <coughs> <laughs> I don't know. I get, <laughs> you get in get trouble. A lot of you don't get in trouble. In this. You don't you get in trouble with it. But anyway, but Rob, hey, man, in all due respect, uh, uh, we're going to need you. John's going to call. I'm going to call Tina and we're going to sit down and talk about how, how do we deal with this issue. Well, it's an issue. And it's, it's, not, it's not good for anyone, any, anybody for that matter. Well, folks. Well, we've given it our shot. I still, I've not voted. I, I won't vote next Sunday. And I, we'll be here. We'll be, we'll be talking about the election. Maybe we'll have maybe a couple of candidates here that we'll, be, we'll have on the show with us and, and talk a little bit more about uh, where we are and where we're going. Maybe we'll talk about some of the major issues that we need to talk about. Maybe we'll, have, we'll get Renee to come down here and chat with us a little bit more about this piece. Get her live here and we can just go through this belt measure again because a lot of you still are undecided. Some of you are just going to walk away. You just don't even like the idea. It's always been proven the fact, okay? Okay, folks, thank you very much for being with us. We'll have a good one. Take care. We'll see you next week. John, thanks, bud.